Firstly, I would like to apologize. Last week's video was definitely not up to the usual standards that I have set even for myself. And long story short, I, I, I don't want to be a host. I don't want to be standing in front of the camera making videos. I prefer a lot of more behind the scenes stuff. But unfortunately, in my personal life, I can't get anyone else who will take this seriously. So I'm forced to sit here and do this because you know the WNBA deserves to have more people talking about it. And I enjoy discussing it, but you know, standing here in front of this camera, knowing that you know a hundred people could watch this, you know, it's it, it's a, I have to put on a performance. I'm really not comfortable in this spot, as you can tell by the fact that I have trouble just looking straight at the camera. And yeah, but. What happened on last week's episode was just, like, it shouldn't have happened. I'm sorry for that. It's not up to the quality that you guys expect from me. And I'll try my best not to let it happen again. Greetings and welcome to The Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Isle and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where twice a week, usually on Mondays and Fridays, I will stand in front of this camera and I will talk about things that happened last week in the association and things I'm looking forward to in the coming days. So let's get right down to it. We had three games on Tuesday and they were all very exciting. Brianna Stewart, she continues her fantastic rookie campaign. Another double-double on her record, but the storm still fall to the dream. Then you have the door between the two league MVPs. You have Maya Moore and Elena Deladon both scoring over 30 points, but the Lynx are able to hang on for the win. And then you have Glory Johnson, that she has the first 2020 game in over three years, and she they, the Wings end up holding on to defeat the Mercury. Then on Wednesday, Brianna Stewart, she had another huge double-double, but it wasn't enough to overcome Tina Charles and the Liberty. Seattle goes on to lose their third straight game. Then you have the Mystics, who have four players in double figures, but despite the fact that they have now lost Kayla McBride for the rest of the season to a foot injury, the Stars still managed to outlast them, grab a win against the Mystics. And then, the last game of the night, you have, oh my god, the Sparks. They were dominating, and they almost blew it. The Fever, at one point, were down by more than 20 points, but they mounted a furious comeback, which falls just short. If LA is able to hang on to just barely win their sixth straight game. And then the weekends on Thursday, the game that just had finished a little while ago, you have Maya Moore going off for 40 points, but then, you know, the Connecticut Sun surprising everybody from time to time. It, I don't know how they do it. It's, it's really amazing. You had Chimea Gumake finally having a great game for once. She had 21 points, including the bucket that sent the game into overtime. Alex Bentley led the team with 24 points. Connecticut manages to hang on and win in the extra period. So after all of this week's excitement, here is the current standings. And I know I said that the season is getting more exciting and anyone can win on any given night, but damn, like I was not expecting the Stars to win, especially after losing their best player to an injury. And then you have the Sun, who at the start of the night were dead last in the league, beating the defending champions who are currently still in second place. I said it, but I didn't actually believe it. It seems like any team really can win on any given night. You never know what's going to happen. But we do know one thing that's going to happen. The Sparks are going to win. That, that's almost a given. Almost. They do have that one incy bincy tinsy loss to the Lynx. But other than that, you know, and when the Sparks play, you know they're going to win. Also, we're only a few weeks away from the Olympic breaks. It is getting more exciting. And I will not cover the Olympics but because, one, I don't know enough about the other nations and all of their teams, their full rosters. I only really know the players who are in the WNBA playing. So I don't feel it's right to comment on something if I don't feel like I have ac adequate knowledge. Also, it's just, I, I also, I'm also very happy for it because I kind of need a break. Life's been kind of hectic for, like, for the past few months, basically throughout the duration of this season. It has not been easy keeping up with all of this, so I'll be happy for a little break, which 
and but uh, during the Olympic break I will at some point in time do a mid-season power rankings where based on how mostly on how they performed the entire first half of the season I'll try to predict where I think teams will finish at the end of the year. But that's still a little while away, but for now we will just look at the two games that are being played this week. As always, I will tell you which ones are currently scheduled to broadcast nationally, which means that everyone in America can see them. But for the rest, you can either check your local listings or you can watch every single game on WNBA League Pass. And as always, the times that I'm mentioning will be Eastern Standard Time, so be sure to adjust for your time zone. On Friday, we start with the Wings at the Dream. Both of these teams, they've had their struggles. But whoever wins this game will be holding fourth place in the league, at least until Saturday's games are played. Then you've also got the Storm at the Stars. The Storm, yes, they've lost three in a row, but they've got a very talented roster. And the Stars, they've been at, they're at the bottom of the league right now. Then again, you know, even though they are playing without their best player, they still manage to win against a pretty decent Mystics team. So, I don't know. Right now, this game is pretty much a coin flip. Then, you, then you've got the Liberty at the Sky. Tina Charles versus Elena Deladon. That should be fun to watch. And then you finish off the night with the Fever versus the Mercury. And these two teams, most of the year, they've been like jockeying with each other for the bottom of the playoff standings. And right now, only one of them is in, I think. Let me check on that. Either way, like they've been fighting for those last positions in the bottom of the playoff standings. So right now, it looks like the winner of this season series is going to be very important. So this is a game worth paying attention to. Then on Saturday, you've only got one game, that's the Wings versus the Lynx. And the Lynx, you know, they started off incredibly, but suddenly they start looking a lot more vulnerable. They look very, very beatable. They're not as intimidating as they were before. But then again, the Wings, they even though they're a decent team, they played well at times. They've also lost 10 games this year. Seven of those came to teams that are currently above them in the standings. So good news is they're beating the people they're supposed to, but they're struggling against the best. Then on Sunday, you've got a full slate of action, so you can literally just spend your entire afternoon parked on the couch staring at your tablet if you have League Pass. At 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, you've got the Dream versus the Sun. And the Sun, if you ignore their record, they are a very good team with a lot of talented players capable of defeating some of the best. But you can't ignore their record because they've had trouble winning. It's pure and simple. You know, it doesn't matter how well you play for the first three quarters, you gotta finish it off. And they have yet to win a single game against an Eastern Conference team. And then at three, you've got the Stars at the Liberty, and the Stars, they've got their first road win of the year, but it's still only the one. They've still got the worst road record of every team in the league. Then at six o'clock, you've got the Mercury and the Sky, and then at seven, you've got two games to finish this off. You've got the Mystics versus the Sparks, and the Fever versus the Storm. So yeah, you've got an exciting weekend full of action. So get your popcorn ready. It's going to be a show. You got. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can be alerted as soon as my next video comes up, which will be on Monday. And I promise it will be high quality. Well, at least high quality for me. Like, not what it was last week on Monday. Just It'll be better than that. I promise. So until then, my name is Nathan Lyle, this has been The Fan Perspective, and I hope you have an amazing weekend. See, I said amazing. Normally I say great, this time I said amazing. I'm pushing the envelope here.